So, uh, welcome everyone to another Connection Wednesday's webinar. This time titled Horizontal Tying Resistance and Welds with Contact, which is basically today's agenda and the topics that we, that we will be presenting. Last year, we did a survey in the UK and these two features were among the most requested ones by our users. And so we delivered them in version 22.1. But first things first, before we move on, let's do the introductions. Uh, presenting today is me, Kostis Hadzopoulos, the technical manager of Idea Statica UK office. And together with me, I have Ralph Pullinger, our product engineer from the Idea Statica headquarters, and also Marius Theokaropoulos, uh, support engineer also from Idea Statica UK office. Uh, during this session, all of you will be muted. And right now, you should be looking at this dialog called the control panel which you can move around by grabbing what we call the grab tab, which also contains some icons to minimize it. Raise your hand for uh, questions. There is also uh, another pane, which we call the questions pane, where you can enter your questions. And my colleague Marios will be collecting them and uh, we will answer them at the end of the webinar during the Q&A session that we have. Lastly, uh, it's good to know that this webinar is being recorded and it will also be uploaded into our uh, .com webpage. And before we move on to the webinar, let's warm up uh, with some polls we have prepared to learn some things about our audience and before I open the polls, uh, I will ask uh, my co-presenters to deactivate their cameras. And let's start with the first poll, which we have created to get to know you. So which country are you viewing this webinar from? Okay, I'm leaving it for five more seconds. Closing it. Let me share the results with you. So uh, basically, we have a lot of people from uh, the UK, which was something we expected, but also there is a lot of interest from Europe and from the rest of the world. Uh, did you expect this, Ralph? Looking at the registrations beforehand, then yeah, it's, uh, that's definitely, um, definitely what we expected. Really was going to be a global event, so that's great to see. Good. So I'm hiding this and I'm moving to the next poll. Uh, so to see how many of you are familiar with what we call robustness checks contained in the corresponding uh, codes that are applicable to your region.
Okay, five more seconds. Closing the poll. Again, uh, I see that most of our attendees are not familiar with robustness checks. So let's hope that this webinar will be useful for them. I'm not sure if you would like to comment on this, Ralph. No, it's, it's a pure, it's a uh, statistician's uh, dream that is 50-50. So uh, that's about, uh, that's what you would expect generally. But uh, I was, I would have thought maybe we should have had a little bit more that are familiar, but uh, no, we'll, we'll see how it goes with the rest of the presentation. And hopefully we get, uh, get more familiar with the robustness checks. Okay. So uh, the last one, for those of you that are familiar with these checks. So again, I'm leaving it for five more seconds. So closing it, I will share the results with you. And uh, this is basically that what I was expecting uh, based on what we saw earlier. So we have some people who often perform these checks probably from the UK, where these checks are man mandatory. Uh, but uh, the other half are hardly ever uh, performing the checks or not at all. Uh, I'm not sure if you also want to comment on this, Ralph. I, I, I think that given the, the global spread of the audience, I think that, that that's about right, actually. I mean, 50% of um, uh, attendees are doing some form of robustness checks which is what I would hope to expect, given the, um, the spread of the, uh, the, the locales of, from the audience. So yeah, that, that feels about right. That's quite good. Okay, so let me hide this poll, and without further delay, let's jump uh, into uh, the introduction for uh, the tying checks. Uh, so, in version 22.1 of Idea Statica, we have introduced this new type of analysis called the horizontal tying check, which is basically uh, commonly performed in the UK, and its purpose is to prevent the disproportionate collapse of a structure in the case of an unexpected event like an explosion, a vehicle impact, or any other event that could happen during the lifetime of a structure. Uh, before we move on, it makes sense to have a look at the events that led to the concept of time check. So basically back in 1968, Ronan Point, a 22-story building, partially collapsed just two months after it had opened. The collapse happened following a gas explosion that took place in the 18th floor of the building. And this explosion blew out the load-bearing flank walls, which had been supporting the four flats above. The outcome uh, of this unfortunate event was that four people died and 17 were injured. So, in the aftermath of this tragic event, the relevant legislation changed to cover what is now known as disproportionate collapse. In principle, this means that the building 
shall be constructed so that in the event of an accident, it will not suffer collapse to an extent disproportionate to the cause. Uh, in the context of the Eurocodes, uh, avoiding disproportionate collapse is part of the strategies defined in Eurocode 1991-17 and for limiting, for limiting the extent of uh, localized failures. The structure that has the ability to limit localized failures is considered to be able to provide what we call structural robustness or the ability to withstand accidental effects like fire, explosions, etc., but without being damaged to an, to an extent disproportionate to the original cause. The time check provided in Idea Statica is part of the generic strategies for designing structures for accidental actions, and specifically, they're based on limiting the extent of localized failure. To achieve this, we're applying prescriptive rules that guarantee the structural robustness of the structure. These rules are defined in Annex A of this Eurocode part. Now, according to this annex for steel buildings, the designer needs to classify the structure into a consequence class, basically found in this table. And this is very important because this consequence class defines the design rules that must be applied on the structure, member or even at the connection level. This process is quite straightforward if one follows the provision of Annex A. Basically, the code requires the introduction of members that are called ties with the sole purpose of supporting the damaged areas of the structure by enabling what we call catenary reaction to develop and, and also by holding uh, the columns in place. Note that depending on the structural classification, the loads can also be redistributed both vertically and horizontally, like in the bottom figure. Idea static connection can deal with both cases, although we call the analysis horizontal time. For a minimum level of horizontal time, specifically for uh, connections, it is recommended that all floor beam to column connections should be designed to be capable of sustaining uh, at least a tensile force of 75 kilonewtons. It is also important not to combine this time force with the effects of other actions. It is not worthy that the Eurocode 1993-18, the part that is relevant to connection design, uh, does not contain any provisions that guide the designer to the calculation of the connection tying resistance. To fill this gap, the SCI, which is basically the Steel Construction Institute in the UK, issued a publication that contains recommendations about the time resistance calculation. The main differences with the stress strain calculation already contained in Idea Statica is that since large strains and large deformations are acceptable, the calculation is now based on the ultimate tensile strength. And also on a modified partial material factor used for time that is now gamma mi ultimate 1.1. And these were basically the reasons that led us to the development of a new analysis type. For more details on the implementation side of things, I will pass the presenter 
Ralph, who will show you, uh, who will demonstrate uh, the use in uh, Idea Statica. So, Ralph, I'm making you a presenter. Thank you, Kosti. And hopefully you can, as this is the first changeover, you can all see my screen okay and hear me yeah, yeah. as well at the same time. So yeah, as Costas has already explained, um, we re reacted to the survey that was sent out last year and um, high on that list was hor horizontal tying resistance. So we've implemented a new analysis method, which is the best way of doing it for us and quite simply we've we've just called it horizontal tying um, some of the restrictions on this it's only available for Eurocode at the moment as that's where we see most of the um, requests coming from um, only one member at a time is analyzed uh, with only one load component and from a licensing perspective this is only going to be available from idea static are enhanced onwards um, so it is relatively I mean it, it's it's very straightforward to implement or to start the uh, the analysis method it's just like changing from the normal stress strain to capacity design or fatigue or, or fire even so really easy to get started in this webinar what we're going to uh, look at initially um, are two work examples from what is known as the green book although confusingly there are two green books um, so we're going to be using both today actually we're going to be using the simple joints um, and then we're going to be using the moment um, connections um, in the last example for, um, for when we discuss welds with contact um, if you would like to follow along or to recap these, uh, we're going to be looking at the full depth end plate beam to column, which is a uh, design example two on page 102. And we're also going to be looking at a slightly more complicated design with fin plates and a hollow section um, as design example three on page 158. So um, it feels like I'm giving sort of like Blue Peter examples instructions at the moment, but. Uh, just thought it'd be useful to give you some background as to where we're um, we're actually approaching this from, and it also helps us because it helps to also um, provide us uh, or, or we can provide examples of the, these validation um, examples, which many people go to to uh, to compare and contrast. So just to, if those of you that, that don't know what this example looks like, it's a relatively straightforward full depth hem plate beam to column and we've pre-assembled the model in idea statica um, such that we've replicated the beam sizes the bolt diameters and bolt spacings uh, all as per that design example and to make uh, things a little bit easier for me today this is a um, it's a, it's a pre-recorded video uh, which is one of the reasons why you you might see a an enlarged uh, mouse cursor but uh, don't let that worry you. Um, so, as I said, we've already set up the model, and all we need to do to, to start with is just to add our tying force of 350 kilonewtons in as the axial force. This is the only thing that is being checked at this moment in time for this calculation method. Calculation doesn't take that long to do. Admittedly, it's a relatively simple, um, simple case but enables us to look at what's happening with the connection with regards to the, the strains uh, and the stresses that are being developed from this tying action. And we can even look at the, the bolt forces. So everything that is, that is available um, that you're used to in the, um, in the calculations with Idea Statica are still available within this um, calculation method as well. So we can look at the bolt forces, um, and the results for the bolts as well with regards to how hard they're actually working. Same goes for the welds. Um, so we get a, an idea as to um, how efficient the, um, the connection that we've already designed is, is working under this horizontal tying 
uh, necessity. But one of the interesting things that we we we're able to do is if we are if we look at the the mesh uh, view and the deform view, we can get an idea as to how the column behaves under the effects of that horizontal tension. And this sort of indicates, I guess, what that dominant um, mechanism is going to be with regards to the uh, the horizontal tying effects. Um, in that particular connection. So if we were to compare the the guide, the SCI guide, with what we've actually looked at in IDEA Statica, um, the SCI utilization ratio is, is roughly, I say roughly, 67.7%. Uh, that's more than rough, actually. That's quite accurate. Um, whereas in IDEA, we were actually reporting a 76.5. Um, could be several reasons for that, really. Um, maybe minor differences with the, um, the modeling, maybe a simplified approach with regards to the um, SCI guide. But we're getting really good correlation of, of just under 9% um, difference, which is quite good, to say the least, in my opinion. The second example that we're going to be looking at today is a slightly more complicated, um, and it's the fin plate um, with two beams um, of different depths to a, a hollow section. And this is, um, again, using stiffening plates with welds and bolts with contact, or sorry, bolts, not with contact, just bolts. Um, and we're setting that up again as per the, the example in the guide. Uh, and this really does start to show um, the analysis, how the analysis methods vary between, between the two and what effects we're able to look at with regards to how this connection is actually performing. Um, so again, nice little video to, um, to kick things off. We've already set up the standard model, and what we're going to do, first of all, is just do a design check on this just to make sure that the connection actually works in, in normal circumstances. So we're just doing a normal stress-strain analysis, and again, we're able to sort of like visualize the strains, the stresses, and also, um, if we look a little bit further on, uh, we'll be able to look at the deformed shape. So what, we're, what I'm trying to show you basically is, you can set up your model for your connection for normal circumstances, and then you can start to do further investigations with that model to look at um, satisfying the different criteria for um, for the connection design. And when we look at this from normal circumstances, and you know, as I say, if we look at the deformed shape, which I always invariably um, start with or, or end up looking at just to satisfy myself that the connection is actually behaving as I expected it to, as I expect it to behave. Um, we're getting again it's a nice correlation between um, what I expect and what is actually happening. Um, bearing in mind as well that you don't want to uh, over exaggerate the scale factor because that can be a little bit scary sometimes. So we're getting all those results that we uh, that we really need to do a design check with the um, with the connection thus far. Okay, so remember at the beginning I mentioned that we can check one beam at a time. So in this example, what we've done is we've actually set up two further copies of the same connection, and we're instigating design checks on each of the beams. So. So to do that, we set one as um, the analyzed member, and then that is is the one that we will look at and apply the loads to. And essentially, what we again, what we do is, if we change the the design tab, we can look at the the load case or the load effects that we need to enter on that particular beam. So. Again, if we just look at um, B1, we've set that to be analyzed, which I mentioned. 
and all the other beams are not. We enter the axial force, the axial ten the, the tension force, and we calculate the results. Now again, it's relatively quick, the analysis. Admittedly, we've only got one load case, which I think you would probably expect for horizontal tying, to be fair. Um, and again, we can look at the results um, contained within Idea Statica. If we move to the check tab, we can have a look at the, um, the strains. And again, we, we've got this great graphical window, which I mean, enables us to, to view what that looks like. And we can look at where the peaks and the distribution of those strains and stresses uh, occur, which is quite useful. For the stress distribution, again, we can visualize not just um, globally, but we can also do that within the plates um, themselves. We can look at the bolt forces that are being developed through that tension. And again, if we look at the mesh and deformed shape for this particular beam check, we can see that we're getting a slight bulge in the RHS uh, wall. Um, but I don't know if you can also notice, we're getting also a slight twist of that beam out of plane, possibly due to the fact that the fin plate is slightly eccentric to the, um, to the center of the column. We can repeat that exact same calculation with, with beam two, setting it to be analyzed, entering in the axial tension, and then running the calculation. This time, however, what's gonna happen is some, some slightly different effects because we, we, we've got a, a bigger tension force acting. Admittedly, we've got more bolts in the, uh, in the fin plate. Um, but when we look at the results, you will see um, the effects of uh, the eccentric uh, fin plate in a lot more detail. Just as usual, we're getting a lot of, we're getting many results. We can look at those in different formats. Um, we've got strain, stress, distributions, and you can just about to start make out how, the, how that beam is starting to twist under that um, axial pull. And we're getting a slight twist in plane and out of plane as well, which sort of indicates what sort of like failure we're looking at ultimately with regards to that, um, that tension force. And just like the um, what you're used to with regards to idea statica and the, and the output, we're still getting um, these the calculation method um, that we can extract into a suitable report as well. So all of the calculations that are required under Eurocode, uh, we can now do with idea statica and also is to create the report um, as a matter of course. So these can be printed off, as you well know, to PDF and, and doc, um, or obviously for those of you that, that like uh, paper copies that can be printed out directly as well. Okay. So if we compare and contrast the results from the SCI guide to that of what we've um, obtained through our CBFEM method, you can see that we're getting really good correlation between uh, the SCI and our uh, calculations. So as low as just over 2% difference between the two methods, which is, I think, really sort of like validates the approach that we are, um, that we're using here. And again, it's, um, it'll basically satisfy fully the, 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 the criteria um, for, for Eurocode, certainly within the UK and, and ultimately further afield as well. So with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass the um, uh, presenter back to Costis uh, and he'll take you through the, um, the next part of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. That was excellent. Uh, 
So uh, let's move on to the next half of our webinar, where we will discuss another new features in Idea Statica version 22.1, and this feature is welds with contacts. Now, the reason that we had to implement this in the first place lies in the requirements of the SCI guides for the so-called bearing column basis under compression, and specifically the way that their welds are designed. Uh, so, uh, in this excerpt from the Green Book, the one for uh, moment connections, uh, we can read that for the part of the column base that is under compression, it is allowed to use nominal weld sizes of 6 or 8 mil leg lengths, and this allowance does not require any further checking. However, in Idea Statica, the underlying weld CBFM models are, are based on the use of actual cell elements. This means that it doesn't matter if the weld is under tension or compression. Load will always pass through the weld, effectively displaying welds from the SCI examples as failing. However, these welds are considered adequate. And since no checks are uh, presented in the SCI guide uh, so that we could implement them and uh, prove the welds pass the checks, we had to work around this limitation by allowing uh, welds, by, by allowing welds to have contacts. As Ralph will demonstrate later, this produces configurations that pass the SCI uh, requirements. Uh, before we move, we we'll move on and demonstrate how to use them in Idea Statica. Uh, and, uh, one warning is that care should be taken from the designer, as this decision has an impact to the fabrication process. The SCI guide assumes that the precondition for using this allowance uh, is basically a member with a sewn end, which must be cut perpendicular to its axis with a good quality saw. And of course, this must be done in a proper working order. Only then this design rule is considered adequate. This means that the fabricator must be capable of performing this operation in a satisfactory way in order to be able to use these allowances. So I'm passing back the presenter to Ralph, who will demonstrate the implementation details and also take over for the rest of this webinar. Uh, Ralph, Thank you. You're good. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank, thanks again, Costis, and uh, welcome back. You're welcome. So, yes. So, what we've had to do to um, negate the the um, the weld limitations is to create a new option for the weld operation, and that is um, contact. It's, this only really applies when we've got surfaces in compression. And some of the criteria there is, or the biggest criteria is there, that must be no gap between the plates and the um, and the and the member in question, the column, if you like. Um, so once that's satisfied, what what the engine allows is the weld to yield a small amount for that contact to develop, although the weld continues to transfer shear and tension. As I said at the beginning, confusingly, there are 
multiple green books and the example that we're going to be looking at is taken from the um, moment connections book and we're going to be looking at the base plate connection from appendix C on page 142. Just to recap, it's a relatively simple uh, base plate uh, with a nice uh, column on a bearing on a base plate bolt distribution as described where you see and all we've done to the base plate is we've just added that contact operation from the column to the base plate for the second part of the example. There's a relatively straightforward example this one because all, all I'm going to do is compare and contrast um, what we used to be able to do uh, with this example um, which is essentially look at a welded column to base plate and one loading condition slightly more um, slightly longer calculation but interestingly um, we're seeing you know a, a weld failure uh, and most people when they look at this is that they they they, all, they, they question um, why we're getting a, a weld failure when we are purely uh, applying a compression force, um, admittedly with a little bit of uh, shear and moment, um, to the base plate. And what we've had to do to, um, to negate that effect is to introduce this weld with, with contact option uh, for the operation. We are able to look at the um, all the checks. We look. We can look at the concrete distribution stress as well under the base plate. Um, so access to everything. So in this second example, which we're going to do, we've just applied the contact from the bottom of the column to the base plate, and you'll see it's a much faster um, run through the calculations. And in this instance. The wells are actually passing and what the welds are now taking is purely the um, the tension and the shear from the other effects and the compression effect is taken out through the contact and we can look at the, dist the stress distribution within the plates within the base plate and we can also have a look at the stress in the concrete, which is a slightly better distribution than it was before. And looking at the welds, we can actually get an idea, an indication as to how hard those welds are working under normal circumstances, avoiding that, um, that compression force, which we had before. So as I was saying, it's a nice, relatively easy example, that one. Uh, results are quite easy to compare and contrast. Uh, if we compare no contact to contact, we're seeing we've got a fail versus a pass um, with uh, a nice difference with the uh, utilization ratios. So next on the agenda is some questions and answers. I had a quick look at the uh, the question panel in GoToWebinar and I've seen that there are quite a few questions coming in which is go always good to uh, always good to see um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Marius to um, to guide us through those questions and Costi will um, unmute his uh, microphone and join us um, to answer some of your questions Definitely. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, yes, so thank you for sending uh, questions through. Can you hear me okay? Indeed. Okay, so um, we, yeah, so we had, we had quite a few questions, um, some sort of discussions potentially that we could also examine separately from the Q&A. Um, one of them uh, that we can start off with, uh, one of our attendees was asking if in a 
uh, horizontal tying analysis, the results would only check locally or whether they would also check the behavior of the uh, members um, overall. So this would be for both local plates and also generally the join, um, the other components connected. Is that? This is, um, oh, I, I have provided an answer to this. Uh, my understanding of the question was whether they would only, for example, if you go to, you know, the example that you had um, demonstrated previously with the column and the beam connected to the web of the column. Um, yep. The Essentially, my answer to this is that um, IDEA will check locally. They, it will check the plates, but it will also check the responses the of the column overall. So as a reminder, it, when you switch to a horizontal tying analysis, all other uh, member ends will be simulated as supported, as fixed. So the, uh, the reactions at those uh, locations will be calculated as part of the, sim uh, of the simulation. You won't need to uh, distribute or, or sort of um, set the forces yourself. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, that's my understanding of it. You can, if there's anything you would like to add to that as well, please do. No, I, th I think that's, that, that covers it very nicely, actually. Um, um, I'm gonna thank you now for um, watching those questions come through as well. Yeah, so Costas, anything to add? No, no, I think that uh, uh, Marius covered uh, the question, according to my understanding. So, yeah. uh, Marius, you can move to the next one. And... Um, there's one, there are sorts of related questions, and this might be an interesting discussion overall. Um, so one question, another question that we had was um, uh, regarding the eccentricity of the loading relative to the other components, whether this should be something that um, is considered, uh, whether it's something that we could somehow counter. I would, um, I, I think the way I understand this, if we somehow try to exclude the impact of the eccentricity, so as a reminder, again, if you have a fin plate connection, for example, it's asymmetric, and to have a small eccentricity, that will have a, a, a unfavorable impact on the uh, behavior of the joint. It could lead to a, a, a sort of, you know, a, a more uh, substantial loading for some of the components and some failure. That is, I would contend the point as well that you simulate this these eccentricities so that you can. Um, establish the joint response uh, more accurately. Um, the, the question is, is this something that should be uh, included? Is this something that should be simulated? Currently, we can't really avoid this without using a workaround, I would, I would think. Um, so yeah, my response to this would be that we should simulate it, we should include this. Um, and the related question is, um, haven't had a chance to answer it yet, but um, high tying forces lead to failure in minor axis bending of the supporting beam, and whether there's a way of restraining the supporting beam to prevent the bending failure and just assess the local effects. Um, uh, I believe you can do this with the restraints. Uh, yeah. If I'm not incorrect with that. So you could use this is a newer feature in uh, Idea Connection. Where you can you can specify some restraints on uh, one or more plates. In, yeah, that's that's correct. I mean, I, I take the point about the eccentricity, and and you can negate the effects. But it, what you'd need to do is either move the the point of um, point of load so that it is directly in line with the uh, center of gravity, or you would provide another plate the other side to balance out the um, the effects. But the trouble with that is, um, what you're you, you're 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 compensating for something that doesn't that you don't really need to, because the, the whole point of this is what we're doing is a, is an in-depth analysis of the connection and in respect to the time forces, as per the connection layout, and yeah. that's yeah. that's really the whole point of why we're using this method to validate in depth the um, the actual connection and the the Eurocode. 
requirements. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, I agree with that as well. That was my uh, my understanding of it. it. I mean, I would not. I mean, this this goes back to. I mean, just to make it fit better with the guide doesn't mean we should actually simplify the connection to make that to make it fit. Um, I firmly believe you and you analyze and you check what you've got. Um, and you know the only the only reason if you, if you were to add another plate to the other side, you're complicating erection. You're adding more cost to the to the connection as well. It, it just doesn't make sense. You might as well check what you've got and and go with it. Yep, agreed. Um, so there is another question. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Oh no, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It was not something. Well, I was, I was thinking I could ask another maybe question for tying, and then we could move to one for uh, the um, uh, compression um, compression only welds. So one other question is, how do you produce the tying force essentially? How do you acquire the horizontal tying um, that you need to consider? Well. Uh... I think uh, it's me that should answer the question. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, you, I think you, you sort of you sort of covered this in your um, in one yes. of your slides, Costas. Yeah. 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 Basically, the answer is is uh, it's a simple calculation, but uh, to calculate the forces, you need to apply some rules that depend on the layout of your tie members and what basically is a tie member. So. Uh, this is something that is outside the scope of connection design, and this is something that you should uh, calculate on a structural level, basically. But uh, from what uh, from what we have investigated in the code, uh, the calculation rules are very simple, uh, especially if, if we compare them to what is available in the other parts of the Eurocode. It's a very simple calculation. So, yeah, th basically this is it. You have to calculate them on uh, on a structure level and then move these forces into idea static connection. Yep, agreed. Uh, you know, the, the guidance gives some rules that you can use to determine the forces. And I think it's, uh, it's that sort of either 75 kilonewtons or higher, depending on the, on the loading. Um, so before we move to um, maybe some compression uh, compression flange weld questions, um, there was a question as well, uh, sort of housekeeping. Will we share the idea statica models? They would um, some of our users would like to look at the differences. Yeah, that's that's not an option. If or that that is sorry, that is an option <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Um, if you uh, get in, in touch with us, um, and we'll 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 put those um, contact details um, on the screen at the end, um, and request those, then yeah, we'll be we'll gladly share those models. Um, obviously, I mean, it's, it's it's not a real world example. It's it's purely an example taken from the green books. So, no reason whatsoever why we can't share them. Thanks for asking. Okay, so uh, another question for the, yeah, so moving to the compression flange questions. Um, this is something Marius, that I think I'm will sorry come to interrupt, but I think that this should be the last one because we're running out of time. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do this. The other ones, uh, apologies, we'll have to kind of get back to you separately. Um, there are some more interesting questions, but I think they need more of a discussion potentially as well, so uh, best examined um, uh, separately as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, this question concerns the utilization and why it's so high when you have a compression only uh, flange weld. Um, so the, the, the sort of short answer to this is that um, essentially you need to have some movement um, to then simulate the compression at the, say, flange or whatever interface is, is welded, and that requires that leads to some um some yield in that flange world uh or whatever world whether it's at the web as well um i don't know if there's anything you'd like to add 
Um, yeah, I mean, that particular example as well, I was also taking Shear. So although the weld yields to create that contact with the compression force, the shear components still need to be taken by the weld, which obviously can lead to um, to those can lead to to those stresses as well. Um, again, it's it's one of those things that it, you can investigate, particularly if you've got the um, the examples that you that we've uh, that we've used there. Uh, you can investigate more those the uh, the actual criteria. But um, what we're actually now showing in the um, in the, the weld format is the is an arrow to indicate what what direction the weld is is being used in. Um, so I, I think the important thing there is that to reiterate is that the weld yields slightly to develop the contact between the member and the plate, but the weld continues to take any tension. Um, and shear effects from the other load effects as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's important to kind of consider how, in in reality, even a, a sort of paper thin deformation would lead to uh, quite a bit of um, stress in steel. So um, yeah. there's that kind of consideration as well. And, and I guess the other, uh, one last thing before we move on to um, to close out the webinar as well is the it's just reiterating that that operation, that that bearing has got to be, um, you know, has got to be a defined operation by the engineer, and it's up to the engineer to satisfy himself or themselves that that can take place within the fabri fabrication workshop. Um, if you specify it and it's not constructed, then um, obviously you're going to have a weld there that is going to revert back. To, um, to a non-contact situation, um, which will again lead to, or could lead to, um, to failure. Yeah, yeah, and don't confuse utilization with uh, UTC, which is the full capacity yes. of the world, which also yep. is an important consideration as well when you're designing the worlds in, uh, in idea connection. Okay, so I think uh, those are all the questions Then we can uh, take a look at today. Okay, thank you very much. Well, as, as Marius has said, that the questions that we haven't been able to um, address or those that are going to require a little bit more discussion amongst ourselves, um, we'll, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to you individually based on, the, um, on your questions. So uh, thank you very much for those questions. That's uh, a lot. And uh, it, it's nice to see that we're, we're having an impact with regards to the features that we're providing. So just to reiterate, the um, the recording from today's webinar will be available shortly um, from tomorrow um, on YouTube from the uh, ID Statica channel. And you will all get a, um, a short survey at the end. Um, and if, we'd be grateful if you could fill that in to make sure that we're, we're hitting the right spots for you. Uh, making sure that our webinars are instructive as well as uh, giving you the right information. And for those of you that aren't already Idea Statica customers, um, you can get a free trial with all of the features contained in uh, the new version, uh, no limitations, from our website at www.ideastatica.com. And one, um, I guess, quick. Um, the best email to request the uh, verification examples from would be, what would be the best email to use, guys? Maybe your email, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, thank you so much. Okay, right. So if you want to have the verification examples, if you would like to email me, which is Ralph. Pullinger at ideastatica.com and in the title of the email uh, which will help me enormously to um, to filter out and to respond if you can put verification examples as the title for the email then I will send you a short email back with a zipped attachment 
and um, yeah, feel free to use them. Um, so that's Ralph dot Pullinger. That's R A L P H dot P U L L I N G E R at Ideastatica dot com, and verification examples in the um, heading. That would be great. So. Um, from all of us here, I would like to say thank you to you all for joining us today. Um, and just to end on, let's calculate yesterday's estimates. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.